Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomai. I got one rant left in me this evening, and by the time you will see it, it will be tomorrow. But I had to get this out because I don't know anymore, man. There is this group that has a problem with truth. And I know it seems like every video we do is WNBA based. As you see, we're trying to do some other stuff with football. Please watch our college football content. NFL will be coming next week. We do CFL. We did NBA. We're doing, I'm doing some baseball, combat corner, all that good stuff. But rants seem to circ, you know, be all around the WNBA right now. Don't worry. I'll have some rants on Tua as a Dolphins fan if he doesn't perform. Promise you that. But we're looking at another situation where, I mean, you already have this situation with Cheryl Swoops, who I would love to know the why. I just would love to know the why. Um, I'm going to be doing another video on her tomorrow because I'm just tired. Tired of listening to this crap. There's more stuff with her. You know, the fact that she got removed from the WNBA pot, um, uh, broadcast team today for the Dallas Wings Indiana Fever game and replaced by Nancy Lieberman, who absolutely did a masterful job praising Caitlin Clark and letting the world know, yeah, she's your rookie of the year. If you have a problem with it, give me a call. We can talk about it. But she's the rookie of the year. Unlike the Cheryl Swoops or Pooper Swooper, as one of the podcasts I watched that calls her, the Pooper Swooper. Casey, I always remember forgetting the name of his podcast, but I watch his podcast a bunch. Lisa Leslie. Lisa Leslie has decided to jump in with her own commentary on the Caitlin Clark Angel Reese debate. Take a look at what the great Lisa Leslie had to say about the Caitlin Clark Angel Reese debate. And I will share my screen so you can see exactly what she said. I'm not going to make a mistake. You can always see what she said. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, right there. As you can see, I don't care what comparisons you make both Reese Ain at Reese 10 Angel and at Caitlin Clark 22 deserve the Rookie of the Year award. The pressure and the weight of this season has forever changed the at WNBA, and both rookies rose to the top and exceeded all our expectations. Take a bow, ladies. Let's take a look at some of the replies that she got. Let's take a look at some of the replies. Let's refresh this. Clark Report, we have a lot of respect for you, but let's be serious for a second. Nah, this isn't a consolation prize. May the best rookie win. That's how it's meant to be. This isn't particularly close, but the media has really tried to portray it as such. Respectfully, no. Caitlin's earned the Rookie of the Year title. At the beginning of the season, everyone was running victory laps with how the fever started and said records only matter when it comes with winning. Nah, you have been you nah, you be having good takes, but this was a terrible one, like really bad. You got one player that's all WNBA first team, and the other is a role player that bring no win in basketball today. Team, stop it. We as a society need to stop coddling. We need to stop giving out participation trophies. These are two adults, and Caitlin has outperformed Reese by a large margin. I mean, come on, Caitlin is third in the MVP race. I'll tell you, I think she's second. Shaking my head, but I'll take third. What message are we giving to younger generations? Stop it. I love your outlook, and I loved you as a player. With that being said, please limit your comments to accounts you follow because there's a fan base that won't agree with you. <laughs> um, No. Can each team's record last year and this? Clark has been made her team much better. Reese has it. It's not a consolation award. Clark and Reese are miles apart. There's no comparison, so please be serious. Just disrespectful to what Clark is doing. Come on now, Clark. I, I didn't break this. Someone else did. Come on now. Clark has earned that award, and it should not be shared. We got to stop doing this. 
Uh, it's unanimously Caitlin, LOL. Angel is doing great, but Caitlin has been doing some crazy stuff, and it would be a disservice to Caitlin to have to share that award. I guess this guy's paying for <laughs> fantasy. Lost all respect for Leslie today. Clark leads Reese in every stat category except rebounding. Clark leads the whole WNBA in points scored plus assists, minus on um, on assisted on points by a wide margin. Reese leads the WNBA with the worst shooting percentage inside six feet. Yeah, you can take a look at it. 32, 18.4 to 13.2, 8.3 to 1.8, 1.4 1.8 to 1.3, 0.8 to 0.5, 41.9 to 38.6, 33.6. Points. It's like not even freaking close. This is Lisa Leslie, Hall of Famer. I am pained. Notice there wasn't one singular comment that agreed with her. I can't, I'm, I'm just scrolling down. There's not one singular comment. See, four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago, there would have been people on here agreeing with her. Like even this one, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume by deserve it, deserve it. You're meaning simply that they are both great players, which sure. If, however, you're suggesting co-rookie of the year, then that's just disrespectful to all the rookies. Co-rookie of the year is a charity award. <laughs> I mean, here's another hilarious le the lengths former WNBA players will go to keep Reese in the conversation with Clark. It's 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 crazy. Like this is I. There's not one singular player. I mean, a player, person here who has commented. And from what I'm seeing, black or white, because I'm looking at all their pictures as well. Yeah, this this is bananas. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this crap now. This is this is just nuts. Lisa Leslie, I forgot to add this on here. My bad. There's there's a little. Lisa Leslie has lost her mind. Lisa Leslie, what is going on with you? Have you been having conference calls with Cheryl Swoops? Have you been having conference calls with Cheryl Swoops? What the heck are you talking about? Deserves? First of all, no one did. Let's, there's, there's, two, there's two words here. And I hate the word deserves. Because no one, no one in anything deserves anything i don't deserve i don't deserve the people who watch our content to watch our content i hope that by, by producing strong content that you enjoy that i earn your viewership i don't deserve it i can put in hundreds of hours in this a week well it's not 100 hours it's not hundreds of hours a week but you get my i can put in a thousand hours a year into this. And I can tell you that I still don't deserve anything. I would have to earn it. I have to earn it by putting out content that people want to watch. This word deserves. Sorry, Angel Reese does not deserve shit. Caitlin Clark does not deserve shit. Caitlin Clark has earned earned the rookie of the year. Angel Reese has not. Angel Reese is not even a conversational topic for rookie of the year at this point. Caitlin Clark has blown her out of the water. And in no world would anyone with any sense or integrity sit here and say that this player is rookie of the year or deserves it. When you have another player, if you want to use the word deserves, which I don't use, or when you have another player who's literally better than her in every statistical category except the one because she's a guard and this one is a power forward. This one plays 25 to 30 feet from the rim. This one plays five feet from the rim or closer. So, yes, the, the big will always grab more rebounds than the little. No question. The same way, the same way, a guard will probably have more assists than a, than a power forward. But, but, assists have always been harder to get than rebounds. And we all know this. If you want to add every, every missed shot, 
that Caitlin Clark is handed on a platter to her teammates for layups. She'd probably be averaging 10 assists per game for the season. Angel Reese just has to grab the rebound to say, I have a rebound. Caitlin Clark has broken tons of records this season, as has Angel Reese in rebounding. Caitlin Clark's broken them in assists. She's broken them in points. She's broken them in threes. I mean, she's broken them in double-doubles, as has Reese. Triple-doubles, points, and uh, points that have been created by assists. She leads the league in that. And this... This, uh, this connotation of both rookies rose to the top and exceeded our expectations? No. I'm going to tell you what. Caitlin Clark did not exceed my expectations. I expected Caitlin Clark to do what she's doing. Maybe you didn't. Maybe the Diana Taurasi's of the world or the Sue Bird's of the world or the Cheryl Soups's of the world or the whoever's of the world or the Gino Ariemas of the world. Maybe those people did not expect this. I. I expected this. In fact, I, I expected her to average more points per game than she is. I think if she had had two months after her season ended in Iowa to rest and get her legs, I think that she'd probably be averaging 22 to 20, 20 to 22 points per game. I also think they didn't freaking front load that schedule to absolutely try to get every squeeze every drop out of Caitlin Clark. Because they wanted the viewership, they wanted to keep the hot the stove while it was hot. Because she's getting eighteen and a half million people watching a final a national championship game in college, they wanted to keep it when it was fire. As ours, our background, the blue fire, the red fire, all that stuff. Notice I've changed the backgrounds around, but the blue fire and the red fire that's the one that's the one that's sticking around. But they wanted to hit when the iron was hot, so they put her in eleven games in nineteen days. And gave the Indiana Fever no time to practice. Literally put them in a position where they're going to lose because they're playing pretty much all the best teams in the first three weeks of the season. Multiple times, in fact. The WNBA damn near sabotaged the Indiana Fever. But if Caitlin Parker had two months to rest and get her legs, I think she'd be averaging 20 to 22 points per game. And I think she would legitimately be a true, true, true contender for MVP because I did say I think she could win rookie of the year I think she'll win rookie of the year and I think she could win MVP and that was before the season started I said that and I still believe it because if you want to read real about the most valuable player it's Caitlin Clark there's not even there's not even a second there's not even a thought she is the most valuable player to her team and it's not close this team won 13 games last year. And if you want to be real, the Las Vegas Aces are not as good this year as they were last year. Angel, uh, Asia Wilson might be scoring more points this year, grabbing more rebounds, but she hasn't made them better. They have gotten worse, and they're probably not going to win the, the, the WNBA championship this year. I'm saying probably. They could. It's possible. But I don't think they will. I think Caitlin Clark is the is the MVP. That's my opinion. She is doing more for her team than anybody. Anybody. Points. The fact that she creates more points in points and assists than any player in the league. They literally the offense of the Indiana Fever is Caitlin Clark. Kelsey Mitchell is balling. Absolutely balling, right? But let's also be real. Kelsey Mitchell is getting wide open shots. Yeah, she's also a real tough shot maker. She makes lots of tough shots. Absolutely. But she gets wide open looks because they're being created by Caitlin Clark. No one's really creating Caitlin Clark's shots. So when Caitlin Clark scores, she's really scoring on her own. She's hitting step back 26 foot three pointers. She's beating her, her defender off the dribble to the rim. Now she's hitting the floater. Yeah, occasionally she gets good screens and gets open and all that stuff. But a large part of her offense is self-created. It's the truth. And being done while she's getting double teamed half the time. 
She, to me, is the MVP. And I said that at the beginning of the year. She's probably not going to win it. It'll probably be won by Asia, Asia Wilson. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Asia Wilson just dropped another 40-point game tonight, went for 41-17 today. But Caitlin Clark has earned the Rookie of the Year, and it's not a, it's not even close. If Angel Reese gets one first-place vote, the person who gives her that vote should lose their vote, should lose their vote. They should never vote again. Because that's completely ridiculous. This is a unanimous rookie of the year. It's not close. And just because these old heads from the WNBA want to jump on and talk about <laughs> exceeding, Angel Reese absolutely has exceeded my expectations. Caitlin Clark has, has met my expect, has done what I expected her to do because she's that damn good. Angel Reese. I didn't expect none of this from her. I, I give her credit. I didn't expect any of this. But Lisa Leslie, for you to sit here and tweet this nonsense, the day that Caitlin Clark goes for 28 and 12 on 10 of 19 shooting and leads a fourth quarter comeback along with Kelsey Mitchell and, and then breaks the record for double doubles by a guard. In the history of the WNBA, not rookies, history. But I guess you're going to watch that Angel Reese broke the rebounding record. And they lost another game. But, hey, what do I know? Indiana hasn't been 500 since 2016. Well, guess what? They're 17 and 16, and they're probably going to finish with 22 or 23 wins. But that's all I got. Lisa Leslie, disappointed in you. Stop hanging out with Cheryl Soups. You look stupid. Let me know, what your th Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Love to hear what you got to say. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and Ring that bell, come on now.